Hey there, looking to give your stereo setup more smarts? Maybe some multi-room action? Good, you should stay. Hey, what's up y'all? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. I'm on your screen to compare two streamers, the very popular 2019 Sonos Port and the, let's not be shy, half the price, lesser known Arlic S50 Pro Plus, released 2021. If you haven't heard of Arlic, they're a relatively new company. They offer streamers like the S50 Pro Plus here and streamer boards designed to be integrated into your DIY smart speaker projects all at what seems to be a fairly workable price. Both the port, and just gonna call it Pro Plus for time, are meant to give your already fully amplified, I'm sure very respectable sounding, vintage stereo setup, some internet savvy, access to mountains of quality audio and multi-room functionalities. Talking more to my typical viewer, just connect it to your soundbar, breathe some new life into it. Even though both boxes are attempting to satisfy a very similar niche, they're quite different in execution and present their own compelling argument for superiority. I'd like to make it clear that both of these devices are clearly aimed at customers that use audio equipment to listen to music, as opposed to those that use music to listen to their audio equipment. Likewise, if you're mostly set on staying in the Sonos ecosystem, I probably won't convince you to go buy the Pro Plus. Spoiler alert. Okay, haven't done this in a while. Too silly. Throw up the scoreboard. Give the Pro Plus a few points for the price. If you're new to the channel, the score is largely for fun. But if the score makes you freak out, make sure to turn that freak out into a comment, ironically smash the thumbs up button, and rage subscribe. First up, design and build. The Pro Plus is a light gray metal box with rounded corners. The build quality is sturdy with a slight industrial bent. The box would be a decent cowbell alternative in a pinch. The face of the Pro Plus is a semi-translucent black plastic slate where you'll find the Arlic and the S50 Pro Plus branding. If powered on, you'll also see the monochrome light blue OLED display shining through. The front also displays a ready indicator light when powered off and houses the IR sensor for the included remote. There's a whole lot going on up in the front, so You'll probably want to keep the front face visible with a clear line of sight when placing it amongst your stereo setup. The back of the Pro Plus houses all your ports. A defining look of the Pro Plus are these two prominent back-mounted antennas to boost Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal strength. These antennas can be adjusted in case there is limited space. They're also optional, so if your wireless connections are fine without them, keep them unscrewed. On the bottom of the Pro Plus, you'll find four little rubber feet that lifts the box ever so slightly. The Sonos Port is a significantly larger black box with rounded corners along the equator. Per usual with Sonos, you're dealing with plastic housing, but hoity-toity better than average plastic. You get a very minimalist, tiny Sonos-like display here spanning the front and top. The Sonos logo is lightly etched on the top of the box and port is etched on a circular rubber bottom. All the ins and outs are in the back as you would expect. If you're looking to make your streaming box disappear, go with the port. If you're looking to tornado proof your streamer, consider the Pro Plus. Are either of these boxes beautiful enough to compare with high-end audio equipment? No. Do they pass the look sniff test or whatever? Sure, why not? Both get a design and build point. I don't hate either of them. And don't hate. Ports, let's start with the Pro Plus inputs. You'll find RCA and optical, so you can hook up your CD player and turntable at the same time, like a boss. As the Pro Plus is technically a pre-amplifier, the analog input is powered with two volts. I don't have a turntable on hand, but Arlux says you can plug the turntable directly into the Pro Plus without a separate preamp. If you wanna do your own research on this, it won't hurt my feelings. All right, the Pro Plus outputs. RCA, including a dedicated sub out, along with two digital outs, coaxial and optical. All good so far, but what's this other stuff? Well, a USB type A port, which can manage up to 1,024 songs. It's not designed for real-time audio streaming, which would require a USB type B connection. You'll find a LAN port for wired connections, highly recommended a 12 volt trigger for syncing the on-off state of your compatible equipment, 
a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna port, power, and a reset button. Three quick presses will factory reset the box, and a single press will toggle to the next input. Fun facts. Per usual, Sonos is more austere. For inputs, RCA, just the one. Outputs, RCA and coaxial, so you do get a digital out. Beyond this, you have two LAN inputs supporting multiple networks, a 12 volt trigger, power port, and your typical Sonos discovery reset button. Our look gets a point here by offering multiple inputs, allowing it to act as a switch, and offering a digital input option. Also, maybe the USB storage is a big win for you. Digital to analog conversion, or DAC. The Pro Plus uses the Sabre ES9023 DAC, which is a respectable, but definitely introductory tier DAC. It does decode up to 24 bits at 192 kilohertz, but that specification is completely useless as for whatever reason, confirmed by Arlick and echoed by other YouTubers, the Pro Plus limits output to 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz, which is CD quality, not high res. Arlick says this limitation will be addressed in future versions, probably the next one. So, bad news, the Pro Plus will not give you that ever so coveted high-res audio you've been searching for. The port stack is kind of a black box, but as the port is on the S2 network, it can support 24-bit as all S2 devices can play 24-bit. If you're hoping to use the digital out because you want to use a separate DAC, all content is converted to 24-bit 44.1 kilohertz. The port gets two points, as I suspect high-res output is a highly desired feature. Okay, sidebar on high-res 24-bit audio. It's fairly well established that humans have a really hard time perceiving differences between 16 and 24-bit depth for a whole host of reasons. It needs its own video. Let's just say I'm sympathetic to the idea that promoting 24-bit high-res audio is not so much an audio revolution, but rather a revenue-generating revolution. If you're looking to really upgrade the sound of your stereo equipment, I'd suggest focusing on the speakers, amplifier, and then maybe deck. I don't think bit depth beyond CD quality is where you're gonna make the most perceptible gains. All right, connectivity and services. The Arlic, well, an impressive showing. When you set up the Pro Plus and connect it to your, let's reiterate, amplified speaker system, you give it AirPlay 1, not 2, so no multi-room capability over AirPlay, but just regular AirPlay is a nice option for streaming up to CD quality music direct from your device, where most Bluetooth technologies fall short of this. You get access to audio files hosted locally, Spotify Connect, and definitely not least, integrated IP streaming services, including, but not limited to, Spotify again, Amazon Music, Tidal, CoBuzz, Deezer, and TuneIn. That's right, I did not say Apple Music, so a biggie is left out. Chromecast did not make the list, which is kind of a downer, particularly for Android owners, but Arlick throws in a Bluetooth goodie. What is it? Well, it's Aptex HD, which is Qualcomm's response to Sony's LDAC high-res enabled Bluetooth codec. So even though the Pro Plus does not play high-res, it will play your high-res Aptex HD files at CD quality, which is the limit of what AirPlay can manage. The devices that support Aptex HD are a bit of a mixed bag. Apple and Samsung devices are not in that bag, so that does exclude most of you, unfortunately. But don't worry too much, Bluetooth will still work on the Pro Plus, even if your phone does not support Aptex HD. You just will be stuck with the normal Bluetooth limitations on stream rate, so something below CD quality. The Beam, you get AirPlay 2, local network access, and a whole host of IP integrated services. Sonos supports a lot more streaming services than the Pro Plus, including Apple Music, so it's more likely that your streaming service will be integrated into the port. If you're not an Apple user and don't use subscription services and don't have any downloaded files to stream, well, then you have a stately black box at which to gaze. Pro Plus gets a point for Bluetooth and making it a little extra fancy for a few of you. Sonos gets two points for AirPlay 2 and being the gold standard of integrated services. Another sidebar, this time on streaming services and high res. While each device supports streaming services that tout high res or 24-bit audio, this does not mean the service sends 24-bit audio to your streaming box. 
unfortunately. High res is so darn convoluted and difficult, achieving it is about as difficult as, well, I have analogies. All right. Anyway, bottom line, as far as I can tell, you cannot stream 24-bit audio to the Pro Plus from a supported streaming service, even if it was capable of outputting 24-bit high-res audio. There are a handful of services that stream CD quality audio to the Pro Plus, Tidal and CoBuzz confirmed by me, um, Amazon Music Unlimited HD, whatever it's called, sends sub-CD quality to the box. A nice touch, the Pro Plus does confirm in its app audio quality in the now playing screen. The port, only Amazon Music HD and CoBuzz send 24-bit to the Sonos network. And like the Pro Plus, you can also confirm in the now playing screen the quality of music. To get 24-bit from CoBuzz, this is how they get you, you need to go to the website, your account, external services and specify 24-bit streaming in the Sonos section. It's a little sneaky. The port gets a point for playing nice with 24-bit services. Maybe you think it should get a thousand points. Feel free to keep your own score. I'm not your mom. The app. The Pro Plus uses Forstream, which you can download from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. I did find setup to be strange based on the app instructions. The instructions in the manual are a bit better. Once you know what you're doing, it's really quick and easy. When the app is up and running, it's a better experience than you're imagining. I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting a lot of pain just kind of looking at the off-brand app icon, but the app is useful, responsive, and decent looking. Anyway, with the Forstream app, you can choose input, browse media from the supported streaming services, create an add to playlist, Define and select presets, adjust EQ, set alarms, update the firmware, plenty more. You also get this remote. I think you get the idea, but I will call out these presets as they do provide a mechanism to initiate your favorite audio playlist album stations without having to touch your phone. The port, I still think Sonos has the best app for controlling Wi-Fi speakers, but some of the extra port goodies you get over the Pro Plus are Balancing left-right channels, so let's say 60% left, 40% right, as opposed to all or nothing. You can choose between stereo and dual mono speakers, so it's maybe that's useful if you're trying to run two party speakers or something like that. There is a loudness control setting to keep the fun from getting out of hand. And with the port, you have some extra volume out options. I think the coolest one is this pass-through, where if you have a works with Sonos, let's say receiver or amplifier, you can adjust the volume of that amplifier in the Sonos app. So very cool, cool, cool. The Sonos app is clearly more refined and mature and offers a bit more functionality, but the Forestream app is definitely respectable. Two points for the port and the Pro Plus gets a super delightful one point. Side note, there are a number of ways to control both of these boxes on your Mac or PC. Sonos definitely makes it easier with their dedicated app that works on both Mac and Windows machines. Another point for Sonos. Multi-room. Both boxes support multi-room. Unfortunately, I only have one Arlic box, so I can't compare that functionality. Sonos, I only have one port, but lots of Sonos speakers, so I can at least give you a sense of the audio delay you might expect. Gotta say, it syncs great, so maybe this bolsters your confidence that your port setup can meld with your other Sonos speakers. Anyway, I'll hold off on points here because I can't do a proper comparison. The display. The Pro Plus has a much more impressive display than you might think. If you hate displays, you can turn it off. It provides setup information, volume levels in a big chunky font, the selected input with a big chunky icon, and when streaming media over IP, it will present the service and media file names. That's mostly it. It does work to make the device feel more premium than the price might suggest. I should point out, however, that you really can't make out the media text on the display unless you're pretty close. So make of that what you will. 
Overall, I think it's worth a point, if just for going the extra mile. Okay, the sound quality comparison. Uh, bottom line, both sounded just fine on my setup. Decent clarity, certainly not exceptional. Um, balanced, overall, a joy to listen to. With the Pro Plus, I did find that the audio was a bit louder at any particular percentage volume. There was just an almost imperceptible bit more clarity maybe coming out of the Pro Plus. Maybe just a hair brighter, but Yeesh, it was close. If you walked into a room, I'd bet you would not be able to name the player. Seriously, y'all, extremely similar. Even when I let Sonos do the 24-bit thing against the Pro Plus 16-bit thing. Note that both these boxes failed miserably when you cranked up the volume towards the upper limit. The Pro Plus performed the worst up there. Um, a lot of easily detectable distortion, even when keeping the amplifier volume fairly low. I recommend not setting the box volume much above 60% for either of them. Lean on your amplifier for volume. That being said, I don't see either of these boxes being the weak link that's going to diminish your music enjoyment. Each get three points. Wrap up. Likely the most appealing part of the port is not that it can get loads of IP content on your preferred speakers, but that it can get loads of IP content on your preferred speakers and bring it into the same ecosystem as Sonos's many other user-friendly products. So if you're entrenched in the Sonos ecosystem, you're happy there and have no plan on climbing out, well, maybe many of these other details I was talking about are immaterial. The port is a fine purchase. It's even back in stock, so you don't have to cope with the scalper prices like a few months ago. If you consider your speakers as a separate entity to your existing Sonos speakers, or have no interest in Sonos products, the Pro Plus is an appealing option, particularly if you're on a budget. Maybe you think high-res audio is a total gimmick. Maybe you have an aging system you still love, but want more ways to play music, but aren't that picky about how that's gonna happen. The Pro Plus supports a really enjoyable music listening experience. It has surprisingly respectable software. It has more IO than the port, so it might meet more of your niche kind of needs. And you can buy other Arlic streamers for multi-room. All much cheaper than Sonos options, I'll, I'll say that. If you're looking to go more premium with your streamer, I suggest your first stop be Blue Sound. Okay, all right, all out of words. Thanks for watching, gonna wrap this up. Please help me get to 10,000 subs so my mom can be proud of me. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>